Hi. <laughs> I am officially in Medellin, Colombia, specifically the neighborhood called El Poblado. And I just wanted to take you guys around and show you what it's like to be a digital nomad in this city. Obviously I'm brand new to the city, so I'm still kind of learning the ropes, but I am with a bunch of other nomads that have been here for a while. So this should give you a good sense of what it's like to work remotely from Medellin, specifically El Poblado. So it's Wednesday, just gonna be a mix of working, socializing, and this weekend will be solely dedicated to exploring Medellin. Also, you guys probably won't be surprised to see these people. I'm ambushing you with the camera. Hello. Hi. Hi, guys. Hey. We're back. back. And this is Ryan. This is a new friend, but he's heading out soon. Yeah, so I'm not gonna make a video. But well, you're gonna be in and out, yeah. <laughs> So I'm currently at Selena co-working space and I'm just casually sitting outside next to the rushing river, with all of the trees around me, it's gorgeous. So my plan is just to hang out here, camp out for a couple hours, do some work so that I have extra time tomorrow to go explore Medellin some more. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be in Medellin that, that long, but I already know if I was, Selena is definitely up there in terms of a co-working space I would consider getting a membership at. It has a yoga room, it has really friendly people. I've literally made a friend outside who's from Spain and they have like happy hours and get togethers like every single day here. So it's a really great place for you to network and meet other nomads or remote workers. And this is definitely not the only co-working space in the area, there's a lot. I can list them here on the screen for you. And I'm gonna try and hit up a few more just to kind of see what a more local one looks like. So in addition to all of the co-working spaces that are around Medellin, there are also a ton of really cool trendy cafes that you can go and do work at. Um, this is definitely good for someone if you're only going to be here for maybe like a week or two and you don't want to spend, you know, $10 on a day pass at a co-working space. There are a bunch of cafes that you can check out. Disclaimer, I was really only in the Poblado area when I was here, but some of my favorite cafes were Pergamino Cafe, which there's a couple locations. I went to the one right across the street from Cafe Velvet, which is another one of my favorites. But this is a super popular cafe, both for people that want to work, but also for breakfast. The breakfast is so good. We came here like four different times. The coffee's so good. There's some good vegan options as well as non-vegan options. But if you want to come here to do work, I would recommend trying to get there a little bit early because it does get super packed. There's a section downstairs where you can do work at the bar or at some of those tables. But if you want a little bit more of a quieter atmosphere, there's also a big upstairs section where you can go and it's just a little bit calmer. People don't really eat up there. So that's more of just a workspace. Another one of my favorites, like I just mentioned, is Cafe Velvet. So it's right across the street from Pergamino. And I actually went here for the first time when I was trying to go to Pergamino, but it was packed. So I was like, okay, where's another place I can go? Saw this spot, went in. So I typically would go here and work in the back section because it's a little bit quieter and it's a beautiful area, like super serene and calm, lots of plants. Foods here is pretty good as well. I did like Pergamino a bit better, but there's some good food options there as well. And the staff is so nice. I became friends with one of the guys that worked there and every day that I walked in, he knew who I was. <laughs> And then another cafe is actually in the Selena co-working space, or I guess like right outside of it. So if you don't want to pay $10 to go work in there, you can actually just sit outside and work at the cafe out there. There's like some acai bowls that they sell, they sell lunch, and it's really beautiful. It's in like this courtyard. So I definitely recommend that. And then there's also a few cafes kind of dispersed. So it's like a big area of co-working, cafes, restaurants, and you can just kind of pick wherever spot you like the best. Definitely, if you're coming into a place and you're a digital nomad, you need service not in Wi-Fi, 
get a local SIM card. Here it's Tigo, I guess. She told me it was a good one, so we're gonna we're gonna see. Even as a general tra traveler, it's better to just get one of these instead of paying your yeah. like local company international fees. Yeah, because otherwise I would be doing Verizon plan and it's ten dollars a day. So for like two, three weeks or more, that adds up. So this is you way more affordable. Yeah, for yeah. that. It was like five thousand pesos, which is like a dollar for this, and then you load some data. So, Why did I just get nervous? <laughs> I think he smashed it. <laughs> <laughs> <Again? laughs> so let's address the elephant in the room real quick, which is safety. Yes, you know, 30, 40 years ago, Medellin and Colombia in general was a very dangerous place to come. But over the last few decades, Medellin and Colombia have done an incredible job of enhancing the overall safety here, the infrastructure, the culture. And I have felt nothing but safe here. But, you know, when I was telling people back home that I'm going to Colombia, you know, the first response is, oh, be safe, be safe. You know, it's just, isn't it so dangerous, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, okay, like anywhere you go, you need to be careful. You need to exercise the proper precautions, whether you're in the United States or somewhere in South America or somewhere, you know, across the world. But there are a few things that I would recommend doing to just, you know, make sure that you are putting yourself in a good situation. So the first thing to know is that people in Colombia actually speak a little bit less English than I was expecting. I do speak some Spanish. I can get around really easily around the country with the amount that I can speak. And it has been super helpful to have that level of proficiency because yeah people just don't speak as much english as they do in some other countries so that's just something to note you know my friend nikki who i was here with she didn't speak any spanish and i had to translate for her basically the entire time even in medellin people don't speak too much english so just don't come here with that expectation you know before you come i would recommend if you speak zero spanish just try and get some of the basics down like you know greetings thank you all of that a good tip to have if you don't speak any spanish is to have your address of your airbnb or your hostel or whatever you're staying at in the notes section on your phone so that if you're getting in a cab you can show them the address you don't have to try and like show them where to go always have your translation apps open here are some good ones that you can download but yeah just have that at the ready whenever you're getting in a cab or going to a restaurant or in the airport or something like that when you know you're gonna be talking to people that don't speak English so just keep that in mind and be prepared but I would say the number one tip that I would have to stay safe in Colombia, but in really any country is to not draw too much attention to yourself as a tourist or an expat or whatever as you can see I don't look very Colombian the blonde hair the blue eyes really makes me stand out like the stares I get here and everywhere um, you know especially in Latin America it's just through the roof so that's something that I've just kind of gotten used to but to combat that you know I just make sure that I am extra vigilant and aware of my surroundings anytime i leave the house i know exactly where i'm going i've already looked at it on my phone so i actually picked this up from the market here for like eight bucks and i cannot recommend this enough it holds all of my like really um important essentials that i need all the time but also things that i want to keep really close to me and not you know get stolen or anything so what i love about this fanny pack is it has a pocket in the back where i keep all of my cash so you can zip that and it's literally like up against your chest so you can't really get it stolen you know this is where i keep like my phone and my passport and my hard drive and then just some other little pockets so literally anywhere i go i am wearing my fanny pack like this you know if i feel unsafe in a situation maybe i'll put it on my body and then I'll put a sweatshirt on top so you know no one can see that I have it on but just have something like this you know close to your body if you're carrying like camera gear around or a really nice iPhone just don't flash it around especially when you're walking around the city or you know you're on the metro don't make it obvious that you have a lot of expensive equipment on you because you just have a target on your back at that point point. and again like I keep saying this is true in every country not just Colombia and then lastly in terms of of, um, safe places to stay in Medellin. Um, El Poblado is probably the most popular place where nomads and expats stay. But additionally, Laureles and Envigado are also two uh, really popular spots for other nomads. Laureles is a little bit more um, budget friendly than Poblado.
Poblado, but I personally love Poblado. There's so many cool things to do, the nightlife, the cafes, etc. really great. I don't have much experience in Envigado, but all I know is that it is um, on the more like luxurious side, so things are a bit more expensive, um, but you can find like really nice apartments and stuff like that if that's more your speed. Hey. Everyone say hi. hi. <laughs> Where are we headed, everyone? Comuno 13. Comuno 13. Via la metro. Yeah, we're going to the metro first, and I guess I should preface, it's Friday today. So we worked for like half the morning, or no, the whole morning, and now we're headed to kind of go sightseeing, which they went to the center yesterday and I didn't because I was working. Lame. <laughs> well, they were filming a video, so technically that's kind of yeah, work. Yeah, I guess we were working too. Yeah, so we we're all working in our own way, and now today, we get to just go explore. That's what's lovely about working from beautiful places like this. The best part of working The best, way. the whole point, pretty much. So yeah, we're going to Comuna 13, which used to be the most dangerous barrio neighborhood in Medellin and now it's revamped and beautiful so we're gonna explore that and go on the metro what is it, the car cable cable cars which is a super famous part of Medellin so let's go if you're trying to get anywhere a little bit further out within Medellin I highly recommend the metro system it is so nice it's the only metro system in all of Colombia it's pretty new and they have the metro like an actual like just metro and then they also have the metro cable cars so you can take the metro from El Poblado all the way to two stuff like Comuna Trece which you'll see later in this video this is awesome and if you're trying to get into the barrios which are like the neighborhoods up in the mountains you can take the cable car so basically a gondola up through the neighborhoods people are getting on and off if they live there but it's also just a really cool ride so that's super cool it's a very nice metro station really really easy to navigate so I highly recommend that over a cab because it's just way faster I'm very sweaty we're not doing a tour because apparently we think we're too cool for tours so we're pretty much just finding our way It's kind of insane that this is. Yeah, what? I'm so confused. It's definitely become a tourist attraction. Yeah, it is a lot easier. It's super steep here. We're like getting a full on workout. So I can understand why there's escalators, but it is kind of just out of place. It's funny. Make sure you go up the escalator because this is where the party's at. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> this is awesome. dangerous place in Medellin. It's crazy what putting some infrastructure in a neighborhood will do. Like there's so much music and art and life and it's just honestly so, so cool. So I definitely recommend coming here. You really don't need a tour, but if you want to learn like more about the specifics of the history and things like that, I'm sure it'd be super interesting, but we've had a lovely time here. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> 